Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski. This video covers an organic chemistry lab experiment that involves spinach pigment separation and analysis by column chromatography and TLC. This is the first part of the experiment and it deals with extraction of pigments from spinach leaves. So you're going to get some frozen spinach here. This is standard stuff from the grocery store. You'll need to thaw it first, but then just grab some tufts of it, put it on some paper towels, it's pretty slimy wet stuff so we're gonna to have to work really hard to get the water out so we're gonna press with some paper towels and then squeeze in you can squeeze out an awful lot of water and get spinach leaves that are still pretty wet but not quite as bad so I'm gonna put those on some paper towels here and we're gonna to continue to sort of push them between paper towels to try to wring out as much water as we possibly can the step of getting rid of the water is really important to get the best results in the extraction of pigments later on. So it pays to spend some time to try to get as many out as you can. It'll make the next step easier as well. Just wringing out a little bit more water here and then what we have is looking pretty good. That's ready to weigh out. So now we're gonna weigh out some of this. The goal here is to get pretty close to four grams of this semi-dried material, and you don't have to get four grams exactly. Just try to get something fairly close and then record whatever it is you do weigh out. So um, in this case, it's just a little over four grams is what I'm gonna end up with. And then we'll take that and put that in a big mortar and pestle. We're gonna grind it up here in a little bit. So to assist with the grinding process, we are gonna next weigh out some sand. So the sand is an abrasive material that will help to uh, grind up the pigments or the leaves in the pigments and allow us to uh, have the extraction work a little bit better. So here, just weighing out about two grams and then that sand goes right into the container. Next, I'm going to measure out some magnesium sulfate. So this magnesium sulfate is a drying agent. This is anhydrous magnesium sulfate, so it absorbs water and grabs onto water pretty tightly. So we're going to start off here with about six grams or so of magnesium sulfate. And um, you may need to use a little more depending on the mesh size of your magnesium sulfate and how dry your spinach is. Uh, usually it's a good idea to try about six or so and, and see how that goes. Now that's really pretty close to six right there. So, um, okay, add that to the mortar and pestle. Then you're gonna need to grind this. So you're gonna wanna really put your back into this. You have to really press pretty hard. So you have to press the drying agent and the sand into the leaves and, and sort of pound them and squish them and crush them and, and just basically try to homogenize that mixture. And what you can see here is we're getting to a point now where we're getting it kind of homogenous, but it's sort of still a little bit cakey. It's not exactly a free flowing solid. So I'm going to weigh out some more magnesium sulfate, some more drying agent to try to improve the flow of that material so it is really a bit drier so it's another about three grams i'm going to add that there and then continue grinding and as i grind here you can see that um, the material changes in its consistency it goes from being sort of a wet cakey mass to more of a, a fine powder a free-flowing powder uh, you really do have to push pretty hard though this requires a fair uh, bit of effort and time. This video is sped up many, many times. So uh, this took, you know, five, 10 minutes at least to do. Uh, and when you're done, you'll be able to tell because it'll be something like a mint green free flowing solid. There'll be some fibrous material in there from the spinach leaves, but you'll have a lot of good kind of minty green looking solid. And that's what we're looking for. No uh, cakiness to it whatsoever. So this is the consistency you kind of want there. You want it to move easily, not be clumpy. And then we're going to move this stuff and put it into an Erlenmeyer flask to extract it. So there's our Erlenmeyer flask. There's a powder funnel that we're going to put on there that's going to help us get the powder into the Erlenmeyer flask. And um, you can do this however you like. I'm just spatula, using a spatula to move most of it in. Uh, and then as we get down, um, I'll end up 
pouring the rest of it in a little bit later on. It can be kind of challenging to get this material in. If you, if you try to do it all at once a little faster, sometimes the fibrous material can plug the filter. So uh, just be aware of that, and um, it, can be, um, it can be kind of a hassle. But, um, but get your solid material into the Erlenmeyer flask, and now I'm going to pour the last bits of it in. There we go. Just clean that up a little bit there. Okay, and now we've got the solid in the Erlenmeyer flask. So now I'm going to put some acetone in there, uh, 15 mils of acetone. Now you should just be aware acetone is a volatile flammable liquid, so you're going to want to be careful with it and avoid open flame. Um, take that liquid, put it in there, swirl it around. So now there's this uh, acetone solution that's swirling around in there, and if you uh, Swirl it around, stop it for a bit, you'll see a dark green liquid above the solid. That's the pigment solution that we want. So the next thing we're going to do then is decant off that dark green solution to get it by itself and leave the solid stuff behind. So there's the decanting process. It's just pouring carefully such that you leave the solid material behind. So there we go. That's the pigment solution that we're after. Now we need to remove solvents. We're going to do that in a fume hood. Use a gentle stream of compressed air to blow into the flask to remove the solvent until it is completely gone and you have a green residue. 